Today we are building out an enclosure for my pixie frog, Leroy Jenkins. Leroy Jenkins has been with me for close to a year now. My time perception is always so off, but I want to say it's around a year. And I have been keeping him in a plastic container with everything that he needs, but it's been basically kind of the bare minimum and that's not really how I like to do things. It's just been really difficult because between now and when I got him, I was pregnant, had a baby, um, and now have a six month old child who's actually stirring right now. So um, <laughs> I need to go grab her. But uh, we're gonna build out his enclosure and I actually had a custom enclosure um, built by these guys right here. So check them out. Um, I had a custom enclosure built for my previous bullfrog, Chet. Um, may she rest in peace. I'm sure you guys all remember her. She was like one of my absolute favorite animals to keep. And it was so heartbreaking when she passed away. Um, and that might be news to some of you because I kind of just posted about it on Instagram. It was, it was very hard for me. Um, but anyways, I had a very, very large custom plexiglass enclosure created just for her. And unfortunately it took a lot longer to create than um, I anticipated. So I never got to put her in it, which makes me so sad. So uh, Leroy will get to enjoy that. So this one is gonna be kind of not a temporary build, but a build that I know that he is going to grow out of pretty quickly. Um, and I'm just hoping that Leroy is a boy. I wanna hear some croaking soon. Like I just really want a giant effing bullfrog. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna do a little voiceover for this one because it's just too much of a pain in the butt to like try and talk through everything. But um, we're gonna add like a little water feature that's super easy. And I actually did show how I separated this enclosure in my other bullfrog build video that I will link you guys to in the description box. And everything that I can link you to, I will link you to um, in the description box as well. So definitely check that out. Um, if you wanna see how I put that little divider in there for the substrate side and the water side, you can check that out too. I had a piece of uh, plexiglass cut, I put it in there. Um, so I'll link you to that as well, but let's go ahead and get started building Leroy his dream enclosure And let me just say it's winter right now So it's probably like the worst time to do this because I'm not sure if he's ever gonna come out of the substrate to like actually enjoy it but um, You can see how he feels about it at the end Here is the before of the cage as you can see I already have a heat pad on the bottom of the side That's gonna have the substrate I prefer to rely on this for my heat source for the most part because overhead basking lights can tend to make your cage a little dry. This cage actually has grooves so that I can fit my thermometer temperature control probe down here so that I can make sure that it is regulated and it's always the temperature I need it to be. Super handy. Now we're gonna go ahead and prepare our substrate. I'm using a mixture of ReptiChip, which holds moisture and humidity super well, as well as Zumed Eco Earth. It's soft, it's nice for them to burrow. Young bullfrogs especially love to burrow, so you wanna give them like six to eight inches, um, especially as adults, uh, substrate to burrow in. I found that my older bullfrog pretty much stopped burrowing as she got bigger, but my little one absolutely loves to disappear into the substrate. So I added a little bit of water. You can go little by little, just make sure you don't add too much to begin with because you cannot take it away. Mix this up super well. Make sure you're using Reptisafe water because as you guessed it, frogs absorb water and moisture through their skin. So it's really important that you've treated this. You wanna make sure that your substrate is pretty moist. Sorry for the word, I know a lot of people hate that. It shouldn't be so moist that you can make a freaking sandcastle with it, but it should definitely be moist. Now I'm adding some Hydro Balls. This is great for enclosures that are gonna be pretty wet and moist and humid. It prevents mold from growing, so if you have any standing water at the bottom of your enclosure, it's not just sitting in your soil and getting nasty. So I'm kind of mixing a few different uh, types that I have here. One is from Josh's Frogs and the other one I will link you guys, I'll link you to everything below. But um, you're also supposed to be putting a little mesh piece over top of this to kind of separate out your soil um, and your hydro balls so they don't get mixed up. But um, I unfortunately didn't have any left. It's not the end of the world. It's not gonna make or break your enclosure build. So I just went ahead and put my substrate in. And I kind of made it like higher in the back because that little entrance to the water, I don't want too much of it to get in there. And then at least my bullfrog has 
quite a few inches to burrow down into. This is actually a turtle ramp that I'm using. It's pretty cool because it comes with little suck blocks or they're big, big suction cups to place it where you need it. But I find this super useful for little bullfrogs, even the big ones, it's easier for them to get in and out of the enclosures. Now I'm just vacuuming out any of the extra substrate. And of course I forgot to film this part, but I put some little rocks um, right where he will be using the little ramp just to prevent a ton of substrate from getting into the water. You're never gonna avoid it entirely, but it definitely helps. Here is a Tetrafauna, I believe is the brand, waterfall slash filter. Once my bullfrog gets bigger, I won't be able to use this anymore because he'll need the entire water space. Uh, well, I'll probably be moving him to a much larger enclosure at that point, but this thing is super great, super easy. I actually have my order, um, my order of filters coming to me automatically. Make sure you do not block those bottom holes that I just pointed to when you put your rocks in. That's how the water goes into the entire filter and how it filters it. So definitely don't block that. I'm filling this with rocks. Um, you can get your rocks at Home Depot. I highly recommend this over getting them from a pet store. It's way cheaper, but I also highly recommend cleaning these very, very well outside with a bucket and a hose over and over and over again until the water is no longer cloudy because if you don't, you're going to end up with super cloudy water, unfortunately, right when you wanna add your animals to your enclosure and it's gonna be a huge bummer and it's just not gonna look as pretty as you want it to be. Bullfrogs, especially young ones, love to hide in foliage or cork rounds like this. So I'm using this grapewood burl and putting this in here because he is still small enough where he can fit inside. Now I'm adding some plants. Um, those holes that I talked to you about that the cords go through, you can actually stick plants through those. They are on either side. I actually use jewelry wire to connect and attach plants and different things to the screen tops of my enclosures. It's super handy. It does rust, but I typically change up my enclosures enough before it does. You can also use really heavy duty, thick fishing line. This also works super, super well. So right now I'm just kind of creating a bit of ambiance, if you will. Leroy likes his foliage. So I just grabbed some plants that I had and I'm kind of just hanging those up and then I'm stringing some of the longer pieces of the vine to the ceiling or roof, whatever you want to call it, the top of the enclosure to create a little um, natural, I guess, shade from the UVB, you know, whatever. We're trying to make this look like a beautiful habitat. My camera actually ended up overheating, so I added that one that looks like um, a certain kind of adult plant, if you will. Um, now I'm gonna add a little bit of leaf litter. I will link for you guys below some of the plants that I get on Amazon. They're not all necessarily for reptile enclosures, but that makes them, guess what, cheaper. It is time to fill up the side with water. Very exciting. Typically, I for my bullfrog enclosures, I put a aquarium water heater in here to maintain the temperature because it raises the temp like 10 degrees, which is never going to hurt any bullfrog unless you are living on the surface of the sun. So that works. Um super well, but I'm going to figure out what the temperature is in here before I go ahead and do that. Now, again, with the water, you want to make sure that you are using Reptisafe water. And I will tell you that Reptisafe drinking water versus water that an animal actually sits in, like an amphibian, is a slightly different ratio. So keep an eye out for that. Don't forget to add your hygrometer and your thermometer. It is debated whether bullfrogs need a UVB light or not, but it makes sense to me that they would because they sit out in the ponds in Africa under the sun. So I've got a UVB light, I've got a super bright LED light. These are great if you have live plants in your enclosure and I also have a basking spot and I put it directly over the rocks so those get warm enough for him to bask if he wants to. But this is not the main source of my heat so if, it's en if it ends up drying out my enclosure a little bit too much then I can just get rid of it. I'll also link you to the LED lights that I've been purchasing. They're really affordable and I buy them on Amazon and they come fairly quickly. But again, if you're growing plants in any enclosures, you're gonna need to have some LED lights. I learned this the hard way, I've killed many plants. So just wanna let you know. By the way, for, um, I'm talking about the heat pad here, but it's irrelevant. <laughs> um, by the way, for um, 
bullfrog enclosures, typically I don't put live plants in there because they love to dig and burrow and basically mess things up. So yeah, I kind of avoid that. And this is actually the aquatic tank heater that I have on hand in case I do need to heat up my water a little bit more. Those are great to have on hand and it's nice to keep your water closer to 80 than not because that's what bullfrogs are used to in the wild and that they thrive on. Bullfrogs actually hail from the grasslands in sub-Saharan Africa. So that's kind of what we're trying to recreate here with the warmth. Bullfrogs tend to enjoy still stagnant water, but we're turning this bad boy on because they are messy. And speaking of messy, let me give you a little tip. Next time you do a water change in your enclosure, since it's kind of a pain in the butt to change, make sure you put your bullfrog in a warm bath in a tub and he will most likely go to the bathroom in that tub and not in your brand new freshly clean rock water feature, water area, you will thank me. Here is a final look at our little bullfrog enclosure. This is such an upgrade to the little bin that he was in before, so I'm super stoked to add Leroy and see what he thinks. Look who I found. Say hi to the camera, bud. Mr. Leroy Jenkins, everybody. Leroy, do something. That brings us to the end of this cage build video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, got a couple ideas. Um, let me know if you have any ideas or what you've done in your enclosures too, because I do need some ideas for when I'm gonna put Leroy in like the big enclosure. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below. Link some of your favorite items. Um, I also will mention that I have a really cool like and good um, Amazon reptile and animal like idea list. So you can shop on there and see some of the things that I buy. Everything that I buy from a reptiles, I put on there so you can check it out. Um, I also have linked in the description box um, discounts for where I get my feeder insects and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.